This video is part of our course on modern C++ which goes from the absolute beginning all the way to a point where you can use advanced features of the C++ programming language. We even cover the four big features in C++20 and that is concepts, ranges, coroutines, and modules. And we have a bunch of exercises to really help you nail this down. Please do check this course out if you are interested in this. And you can also check out what others are saying about the course here. The link is going to be shared in the description below. In this lecture, we're going to be looking at compound bitwise assignment operators. And these are operators that work on some variable and put the result back in the same variable. These are the operators we're going to be looking at. You already know all these operators. We're just going to make them compound in that they are going to work on the variable and put the result back in the same variable. So here we have a right shift bitwise operator. We have a left shift bitwise operator. We have a bitwise or bitwise and and bitwise zor. And we're going to be seeing how we work with them in this lecture. Here is a simple example of compound bitwise left shift operator. So we have a variable called sandbox var, which is going to be storing our values. We have a letter n, and we're going to be shifting it left in place. And you see the statement here. This is the compound bitwise left shift operator. It's going to shift left by two bits, and it's going to store the result back in sandbox var. This is how it works. We also have compound right shift here. We're going to right shift by four bits and store the result back in sandbox var. And we're going to print this out with std bit set. We can also do or and and zor, and we have a few examples here. This is the compound bitwise or operator. We're going to or with this literal, and we're going to store the result back in sandbox var. Down here we have the compound bitwise and and uh, compound bitwise zor, and uh, this is going to do exactly what you expect. The special thing is that it's going to store the result back in the same variable. It's pretty much the same thing we saw with the compound arithmetic operators, but in this case, it's going to be the bitwise operators we have learned about in this chapter. We're going to head over to Visual Studio Code and actually see this in action. Here we are in our working directory. The current project is compound bitwise operators. We're going to grab our template project and we're going to put that in place, compound bitwise operators. And we're going to open this up in Visual Studio Code pretty quick. We're going to open a folder. We're going to choose this folder and we're going to open it. And we're going to open our main file. We're going to get rid of what we don't want here. And we're going to get started here. We are going to put in our test code. So we're going to put that here. But again, you notice that we have this set with manipulator. We also have bit set, so we need to include these. So let's do that. I O manip. And we're going to include bit set. And once we do that, the code is going to work fine. And uh, now we can start and explain the code here. We have a variable sandbox var. It is unsigned car. So this is going to be eight bits in memory. Let's say that. And it's going to be unsigned. It's going to store positive numbers. If we go down here, we're going to print it out. Nothing special here. And if we compound left shift, we're going to shift two bits to the left. And we're going to store the result back in sandbox var. So here, if we print sandbox var, we're going to get the modified value. And here we're going to get the original value. We can open our new terminal so that we can see this. We're also going to click on this file icon here so that we have some breathing room so we can see the entire thing here. And we're going to build with GCC. So let's do that. And uh, we're going to run this. We're going to click and uh, hit enter in the terminal here. And we're going to say rooster to run this. You're going to see that we're going to have our value in here and it's going to be shifted left by two bits because that's what we have here. So you see we had two zeros here. Now we have shifted left by two bits and these two ones here are going to show up right here. And we're going to pad in new zeros for places where things have been pushed to the left. Okay, this is compound left shift. 
and it is really nothing special. And uh, the special thing is that we are shifting left and uh, storing the result back in one variable in one statement here, which is really compact. We can take the value here and shift it right by four bits in place. So what we have here, we have four zeros. This number here should show up towards the right when we finish this operation here of shifting right by four bits. Let's do this. We're going to run this task to build with GCC. We're going to run our program and you're going to see that now we're going to shift right by four bits and this thing here has moved towards here and we have padded in zeros here. I hope this makes sense. The next thing we're going to look at is compound or and uh, we are going to use the or operator to turn on the lower four bits. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to or this and uh, the quickest way to do that is not actually what we have here. We're going to or with all ones in the lower section of this binary number here. So we're going to have four ones and four zeros. And if we or this with whatever we have in sandbox, the lower four bits are going to be turned on regardless of whatever we had in there. So we're going to build with GCC again. We're going to go in the terminal, hit enter and run rooster. We're going to see that all the bits now are on because we ORed with all ones in here and we stored the result back in this sandbox variable here. We can go down and try compound bitwise and operator. And we're going to end with zeros to turn those bits back off. Why not? So we're going to put four zeros here and let's make sure we have four zeros and four zeros. So what we're going to get, we're going to get all zeros in here. If we build, we're going to run the task to build with GCC and uh, we're going to click somewhere and hit enter in the terminal. We're going to run rooster and we're going to get zero here because we just ended with a binary number, which is all zeros. I hope this makes sense. We can also go down and play with compound Zor. So what this is going to do is Zor this with this binary number we have here. And uh, in the lower section, notice that we have once. So what we're going to have is one one. That's going to be the result here because we're going to have a zero one and zero one. Remember that in sandbox now what we have in is all zeros. So we're going to have zero and one. The result is going to be one. And again, if you don't know what Zor does, please go back in the last lecture and you're going to see a table that really explains this. So let's build and uh, run this. The build is good. So we're going to run our rooster app and you see that this is exactly what we expect to see in here. Okay, by now you might have seen that we have seen almost all the operators we have seen so far, but what about the negation operator? Well, we can't really use it as a compound operator because it is a unary operator. It has one operand. And these compound operators work really well if you have two operands. So if you try to do something like, uh, let's grab this and use this as an example. Let's go down here. And if you try to do bitwise negation like this, you're going to have to put in a second operator, but this is a unary operator. It's going to be working on one operand only. So the compound bitwise not operator doesn't really make sense. That's why we haven't looked at it here. This is really all we set out to do in this lecture. I hope you found it interesting. We are going to stop here in this lecture. In the next one, we're going to learn about masks. Go ahead and finish up here and meet me there.